The following is brought to you by... Students working together to make our world a better place. Can you dig it? The earth is beautiful, and we've got to keep it that way. Learn about the world and how to keep it now. Nice. How to keep it nice. Dig it, cause we can. Dig, dig it. it for clean air. Dig it. We need you there. Cause this is the world we share. Dig it for education. Dig it for beautification. Dig it. We need you there. Cause this is the world we share. Last week on Dig It. Ah, uh, Frank, there was no last week. What? This is the very first show. Oh, right. <clears throat> this week on Dig It. Beautification stewardship. Beautification what? Beautification stewardship. Beautification stewardship. Or B S S means beautifying the environment in a beautiful way. Or... Look, beautification stewardship isn't that complicated. Basically, it's about taking care of the world around you. critical to understand the native plants that are part of our ecosystem and how they affect the ecosystem and the plants and the animals, uh, the wildlife that is dependent upon the native plants. An ecosystem revolves on, around, on itself. It's basically the ground, like plants, animals, and dirt, and the rain and water down below. And if the ecosystem didn't have animals, and then the plants won't grow. We have 2,400 native plants here in the Northwest. I would say that one of the number one reasons to use native plants in the landscape is beneficial to wildlife. Birds, hillbugs, caterpillars, ants, ladybugs, bees. To reduce water and pesticide use. It's adapted to taking the amount of water that its habitat was used to. You, you can just like plant them, just let them be, and then they'll just grow by themselves. They're beautiful. Native plants are like better, prettier. I think native plants are kind of neat because they're they're from this area originally. I like the plants that are growing. Animals rather prefer to eat native plants than um, all native plants. They wanted native plants out here because so it looks more. Um, well, it's more of a habitat for the animals, and it looks more wild. It helps empower kids to think of ways that they can bring their environment back into something that's healthy. There's ways you can use native plants. It's fun to discover those ways to use native plants. You can put them in your salads. You can do baskets with them. You can watch wildlife with them. So the diversity of our native plants just makes it fun to bring into just about everything you can do in a landscape. It's the Jenny Sprinkler Show with your host, Jenny Sprinkler. Thank you, everybody, and welcome to the show. Today's topic, plants, native versus non-native. Native, you say your life used to be good. Uh-huh. Good. How? Well, my roots had room to grow. I had plenty of exposure to natural light. I had a good relationship with the bugs in my soil. We had an understanding, but then... But then, what? He moved in. Whoa, slow down, babe. Don't call me babe. He came from Mars or somewhere. Saturn, actually. Mars, Saturn. The point is he moved in like a big three-car garage. Don't knock three-car garages. It's the only place where we can park our spaceship. He hogged all the soil. His roots choked my roots. He blocked all my natural light, so I couldn't create my own food. And he drank way more water than he should have. I was thirsty. He brought all these uh, 
little bugs that won't stop chewing on me. She is so lying. I'm not lying. We'll be right back. You know that outfit of yours is pretty hip. Not. Well, you're a bubble head. <laughs> OK, Doctor, you cross me off. Oh, I yeah, are I you guys going to throw chairs at each other? Because it would really help our brain. Beautiful, beautifying through beauty in a beauteous way. So, now that you know about the importance of native plants, let's move on to another beautification challenge. Moss. Now, some people look at a rolling green lawn and say, Ooh, pretty. To others, however, lawns spell danger. Meet the Seattle Public School Gardeners. Their mission, to beautify your school grounds in an environmentally friendly way. The gardeners take care of the grounds for the entire school district with support from students and community stewards. They maintain over 100 signs. That's about one square mile or 250 cents per mile. Included in our job description is mowing, hedging, weeding, pruning, mulching, chipping, planting, moving, storing, sorting, composting, lining, bagging, wrapping, carrying, top dressing, recycling, irrigating. Okay, that was good. This time with big energy. Can you hear me? Big energy. Lots of energy. Mowing, hedging, weeding. Pruning, mulching, chipping, planting, removing, storing, supporting, composting, lining, dragging, wrapping, carrying, top dressing, recycling, irrigating, and cut. Brilliant. Excellent job. Let's do one more take just a little bit faster. O or not. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll be excellent. Perfect. Thanks. So where were we? Beautifying. <coughs> Beauty. Oh, that's right. Lawns. The problem with lawns is that they're non-native plants. And they require a lot of fertilizer. And they require a lot of water. So what can we do in place of grass? Let's look at what the kids at Cleveland High School did. out here trying to help students connect with our urban ecosystem. Um, we're beautifying the ground here, beautifying our environment, and trying to be stewards of it. They actually come out here and see that they can make a difference. I mean, you know, they can come through and they clear out, and they learn how to prune, they learn what is a weed, what is not a weed. And they turn around and they can see that they've made the grounds look beautiful and they're just really proud of the, of the school. You can see the smiles on their faces. They're really enjoying it when we come outside. And that's really important as well. They're planting uh, seeds and flowers and vegetables, and they have been uh, tearing out some ivy, trying to put in some native plants. And so they are learning about the balance and the ecosystem here, right here in the school grounds. a lot of ownership after working so many hours out here. So far we've talked about why it's best to choose native plants 
and we've talked about the downside of grass. Now it's time to get up close and personal with compost and mulch. Mm, mm, mm. Did somebody say compost? Compost at 15 cents. What does compost mean anyway? Well, it's like mulch. What's mulch? It's sort of like compost. Yum! In general, compost is something that replaces fertilizer and adds nutrients to the soil. In other words, it's a delicious, healthy meal for your lawn. Bon appetit! So what's compost made of? Compost is a mixture of organic matter. It can include grass clippings and leaves, and food and manure. <laughs> Another important part of the composting process is Turn your food scraps into nutritious compost. Ooh, I like compost. Their castings add nutrients to the soil, which make the plants healthy and strong. You can compost fruit and vegetable peel, moldy bread, eggshells, tea bags, and coffee grounds, newspaper credit receipts, and more. Oh, yuck. Worms are vegan. They don't like meat, dairy products, or oily foods. No. <laughs> provides nutrition for the soil, what does mulch do? Mulch is a soil protector. It keeps plants' roots from freezing in cold weather, helps plants' roots retain water, it helps protect against weeds, and provides habitat for friendly bugs. So what's mulch made of? Like compost, mulch is made of organic material. It includes grass clippings, leaves, and wood chips. Another good thing about compost and mulch is that it allows us to make and keep our school grounds healthy and attractive without using a bunch of chemicals. Yuck! As beautification stewards, our motto is simple. If it's not healthy, it's not pretty. Just won 500,000 pounds of mulch and compost, and you're just one question away from the one million pound jackpot. Wow, you must really want to beautify the environment. Okay, here we go for one million pounds of mulch and compost. Which of the following is in worm compost, but not in mulch? Is it A, leaves, B, grass clippings, C, moldy bread? or D, wood chips? Well, I know that leaves are okay because we use them in our mulch and compost projects at school. And I think my dad uses grass clippings in both mulch and compost. So that leaves moldy bread and wood chips. Um, I think I'm gonna use my last lifeline. I'd like to phone a friend. All right, who are you gonna call? Oh, oh, call me, I know, call me. My sea monkey. Sea monkeys, y'all call it. Okay, we'll see if our friends at Quest can get Claire Sea Monkeys on the line. Hello? Hello, is this Claire Sea Monkey? Yes. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Claire. We're ready. Here's the question. Which of the following is in worm compost but not in mulch? Is it A, leaves, B, grass clippings, C, moldy bread, or D, wood chips? Which one is following items would be found in worm compost but not in mulch? I'll go with C, moldy bread, Regis. Is that your final answer? Yes. Claire chooses C, moldy bread, which is a food. 
Yes, see, moldy bread would be found in worm compost and not in mulch. Congratulations, Claire. And the remaining 999,980 pounds of compost and mulch will be delivered to Claire's home by Cosmo.com, no questions asked. And we'll see you next time on Who Wants to Beautify the Environment? Bye-bye. We all want to take care of the world. After all, it's the only one we've got. But we have to do it right. Otherwise, we end up hurting the environment more than we're helping it. The following is a dramatic reenactment. It is? So, what do you want to do today? I don't know. Hey, why don't we go down to school and trim some uh, trees and bushes? Okay. No real live trees were harmed in the taping of this dramatic reenactment, but they were made really ugly. Lots of people like to help us do our job, and that's great. But before you do any work on city or school grounds, you need to get permission, and you need to have a game plan. In Seattle, forming a game plan and getting permission might look a little something like this. Your jacket says Bill. It's a long story. <clears throat> and I know you're all excited to get out there and uh, begin your beautification project, and I know you each have a particular idea about what kind of project you want to do. Yeah, I'm Michelle Kringle, and I want to paint out the graffiti in a nearby city park. I'm Jill Taylor, principal of Hard Knocks Middle School, and I want to get rid of the weeds in our school's courtyard. And I'm Sheila, uh, no last name like Madonna. I just want to plant pansies, uh, purple pansies, at every school in the district. Okay, well, those are all good, uh, good projects, uh, but there's a couple things that you're going to have to know and follow. Some basic rules you have to stick to if you want to get these projects underway. Now, let's start with uh, Joe and uh, Sheila here. Now, because both of your projects have to do with public schools, you need to get permission from the Seattle Public Schools. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your computer. You're going to look up the website, seattleschools.org, and you're going to click on self-help project application. You're going to follow all the instructions. You got that? But I'm a principal of a school. I shouldn't have to fill out any application. You want to do a project on school grounds? Yeah. Then you got to fill out a self-help project application. Got it? Self-help project application. Michelle, now since what you want to do is in uh, public parks and get the graffiti off of those, great project. You're going to need the permission from the city. What you're going to do you're once again, you're going to go to your computer, you're going to look up the website, and then you are going to click on adopt a park, adopt a street. All right? You're going to follow the instructions, do everything they tell you to do. All right, people, are you ready to beautify? Yeah! Put it in! Put it in! Let's beautify! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Purple pansies. Mm. Beautifully beautified in a beautifully beautified beauty talked a lot about what beautification and stewardship is. Now let's put what we've learned into action. Could somebody start the movie? Welcome to Beautification Stewardship Action. Beautification Stewardship is all about taking care of the world around you. By following these simple steps, you'll be well on your way to becoming a beautification steward. Step one, pick up litter and paint out graffiti. When you see litter on the ground, pick it up and put it where it belongs, either in the recycling or the trash can. And if you see graffiti on buildings, walls, and sidewalks, get permission to clean it up. Step two, choose native plants. When creating a garden, choose native plants. Native plants thrive in their natural environment because they're comfortable in the soil, they are adapted to the climate, and they're used to the native bugs. Step three, Promote healthy lawns with grass cycling. The easiest way to grass cycle, which simply means leaving the grass right where you cut it, 
is with a mulching lawnmower. Grass cycling adds nutrients to the soil and helps the soil to retain water. Four, use compost and mulch. Using compost and mulch will provide plants with food and protection, both of which are crucial for a plant's overall health and beauty. Step five, get permission and have a game plan. Before starting any beautification project, you need to fill out either the self-help project application or the Adopt-A-Street, Adopt-A-Park application. Soon you'll be on your way to becoming a beautification steward. This beautification stewardship action film has been sponsored by Seattle Public Utilities and Seattle City Light in partnership with Seattle Public Schools. To learn more about beautification stewardship, please visit www.digit.seattleschools.org. That's the end of this episode of Dig It. See you next time. And so, to summarize, Beautification stewardship, or once again, BSS, is the act of beautifying 